still trying to contain myself, and I got to preach. Y'all pray for the preacher. Y'all pray for me. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to Deuteronomy chapter 23, starting with verse number 21. Amen. Uh, uh, when you find it, rest upon your feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to be reading from the Harmon Christian Standard Bible. Amen. It may read a little different. Amen. Amen. But it all means the same thing. Amen. Amen. For the Bible declares, if you make a vow to the Lord your God, do not be slow to keep it, because he will require it of you. And it will be counted against you as sin. But if you refrain from making a vow, it will be counted against you as, it will not, excuse me, be counted against you as sin. Be careful, somebody say be careful, to do whatever comes to your lips because you have freely vowed what you promised. To the Lord your God. That's enough to preach right there. You may be seated to the Lord. You may be seated. Amen. Now, 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 now. Turn and find you a neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. What did you tell the Lord? That's what we are going to talk about. What did you tell the Lord? Beloved of God, uh, this morning, I'm going to try not to be long-winded, uh, but beloved of God, it is important to understand that a promise is a promise. A promise, a vow, a covenant is a promise and an agreement that you make and establish between one or more people. Now, the Bible said, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. Uh -huh. Amen. We see God has made us plenty of, plenty of promises and covenants in the Bible. Amen. He said that he would never leave us nor forsake us. He said, and lo, I'll be with you to the ends of the world. He said that uh, uh, he, he promised to heal us. He promised to provide for us. He promised to take care of us. And the list goes on and on. Hallelujah. There are several covenants and promises in the Bible now that God has issued. And some have been fulfilled and others to be fulfilled. Amen. Amen. And I'm holding fast to the promise and the prophecy of God because whatever God has spoken, it shall come to pass. For the book of Numbers said that God is not a God that he shall not lie, neither son of man that he shall repent. Whatever God has spoken, it shall come to pass. Can I prove my point? The book of Genesis said God only spoke, let there be, and the Bible said, and there was. Amen. When God speaks into nothing to create something, nothing responds. Y'all y'all should have got excited right there. I said when God speaks into nothing and something is formed and created, nothing has to respond. Amen. You've got to have a powerful voice because when there is nothing, there's nothing. Amen. There was neither time, space, nor matter. Amen. But the Bible said that water covered the, uh, covered the earth. But he spoke into darkness, nothingness, the void of nothing to create something. And nothing had to give way to the voice of God. Amen. So my God is so powerful that if he made a promise over 10,000 years ago, that the promise still holds value and weight now. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm seeing it happen that everything that God has promised up until this point, it has happened. Can I suggest to you, death ain't always a bad thing when you are a believer. Why? Because we fall asleep on this side. But he said, I go away to prepare you a mansion. And that's where he keeps his promise that I'm going away to receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be. I wish I had a praying church. 
I wish I had a body of believers in here. Amen. That when God makes a promise, that it is concrete. Amen. When God gives you his word, you can take it to the bank because it is good. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. I can cash in on any promise I want of God. I can cash in on any word of God. Why? Because he said, my word will not return unto me void. There's some moments and some time you ain't got to pray a long prayer, but learn how to give God back his word. For the Bible said that if you give him back his word, he got to perform it. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. Yeah, you said by your stripes I'm healed. You said I should not have to worry about what I'm going to eat or wear tomorrow because you clothe the lily of the field and you feed the birds of the air. And God, because you care that much about me, you said that you would provide for me. You said that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And I call according to his purpose. Y'all not going to pray with me. Yeah, you said that you would never leave me nor forsake me. I may not be able to feel you right now, but I know that you are there. I'm able to give him back his word. You made me a promise, and I'm giving you back your word. Hallelujah. One thing that I believe that the believer does not utilize is the fact that you can give God back his word. Amen. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, give God his word back. Yes, sir. Y'all, I feel like preaching this morning. Yes, sir. I'm going to preach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Learn how to give God his word back. Sister Alice, the problem with the saints, we fail to recognize the power that we have. But the Bible said that the power of life and death lies within the tongue, and they that speak shall eat the fruit thereof. Amen. If I got the power in my tongue that whatever I speak in manifest, learn how to give God back his word. For the Bible says in Psalms 1 that he meditates on the law both day and night. And there are some moments in meditation is not inwardly but it's outwardly. I wish I had a prayer church. Can I, uh, can I explain myself, Pastor Garrison? The reason why I say it's not only inwardly but outwardly. Amen. Because I set the atmosphere around me. When I, when I speak the word and I give God his word back. That means I'm setting the atmosphere around me. I'm letting the hell hounds know that I belong to God. I'm letting the hell hounds know that I'm protected of God. And the same way that he built the hedge of protection around Job is the same way that he's building the hedge of protection around me. Can I tell you I'm covered under the blood of Jesus all because he promised me. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to me that I can run into him because his name is a strong tower. He's my balance in the time of battle. Shelter in the time of trouble. I can go on and on this morning. Amen. But I've learned that my meditation can always be in with me when I can give his word out. Y'all ain't gonna talk back. Yes, sir. I got to learn how to give his word back to him so that I can receive the manifestation. But beloved of God, I didn't come here just to talk about the promises of God. But Pastor Williams, I came to talk about our promises to God. Yeah. Have mercy on my soul. I came to talk about uh, our promises to God. Uh, can I tell you that God is always going to keep his promise. Uh, but I found out, children of God, that it's hard sometimes for us uh, to keep our promises. Y'all, it just got quiet up in this sanctified church. Yeah, yeah, y'all know how it is. Oh, God, if you get me out of this, I'll be in church every single Sunday. Can I tell you something? If you don't dock them doors like you promised God, the Bible said that he's going to require it to you and it's going to count as sin. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. That's why the Bible said that it's better not to make a lie. 
vow than it is to make a vow. I'm looking at the church now. We made plenty of vows to God that I'll go and I'll preach your word. And some have reneged on their promises. Lord, if you deliver me out of this, yes, sir, Jesus, I'll sing your praises. Father, if you just do this for me, God, I promise I'll go wherever you tell me to go, even if I have to go by myself. And the problem I found out with some folks that you won't even go if you have to go by yourself. I found out with some saints you too scared to do the will of God by yourself. Baby, can I tell you, if you came in this world by yourself, you gon' die by yourself. If there wanna be some moments just to do the will of God, you can't go with the crowd. You got to learn how to go by yourself. Yes, sir, you got to understand that you made a vow to God. Can I prove my point here? Yes, sir, the day you got saved is the day that you made a vow to God. You confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God. You confess with your mouth that He died for your sins. You confess with your mouth. That he is ascended into heaven, sitting on the right hand of the Father. You confess with your mouth that you are giving your life to God. What are you seeing here, preacher? You made a vow that I'm going to live for God and nobody else. For the Bible says that God is a jealous God. You cannot serve two masters. Either you are going to love one and despise the other. But can I tell you, some people have already proven what their true colors are. You really don't love God like you say you love God. You love your sin more than you love your God. I wish I had a prayer church. For the Bible said, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. That's a vow to God. That when you get saved, God, I give you all of me. God, that is my vow. I give you my heart, my mind, my body, and my soul. If I got to stop doing what I'm doing, just to be committed to you, I'll stop it right now. Hey, God, I wish I had a prayer church up in here. Yes, sir, beloved of God, I know there are some things in life, I know there are some things in our Christian journey that we have to be delivered from. I know there are some things in our Christian journey that is going to take a process. I know there are some things in our life we got to go through in order to come out. Y'all ain't going to talk bad. Yes, sir, there are some things that God can take us out instantaneously, but there are some things He's trying to pull out along with the seed. And you got to be willing to go through the process. And if you go present your body as a living sacrifice unto the Lord your God, be willing to go through the process. You made a vow for God I live and for God I die. And if it's going to cause me to go through it, yes, Lord, I'll go through it. Yes, it's still yes. I gave him a complete yes. And in me giving God a complete yes, I give him all of me completely. Y'all ain't going to pray with me. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. The problem I have with the church, nowadays we treat the word of God as an all-you-can-eat buffet. You pick and choose what you want, and then you look over the rest. I wish I had a prayer church. I'm trying not to dance all over this pulpit. Yes, sir, you can't pick and choose which scriptures you use to apply your life. God gave us 66 books from Genesis to Revelation. Either you going to take all of it or take none of it. Well, can I tell you, you can't pick and choose huh? which ones you want to live by. Huh? You can't pick and choose which standards huh? you want to live by. Huh? You can't pick and choose huh? whether you want to live holy today you live like hell tomorrow. Huh? You can't choose to live like hell today huh? and holy tomorrow. Huh? You either are or you not. Huh? But the Bible 
Bible said, I'd rather you be hot or cold. Because if you are lukewarm, I'll spew you out. Hallelujah. You either are or you not. There is no great divide. There is no in between. Or in between. You can't live like holy and you can't live like hell at the same time. For the Bible said, you got to be one or the other. Yeah, 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 God, what did you tell God when you got saved, what did you tell God when God brought you out, what did you tell God when he healed your body, what did you tell God when he delivered your children, what kind of covenant did you make God, what kind of promise did you make God, are you keeping your promise, or did you fall short, baby let me tell you, it's better for you to keep the promise, what are you saying here preacher, God already knows your shortcomings, he knows your imperfection, our God Jesus already knew Peter, have a heart shot tipper, and he'll let a cuss where it's not out, he already knew Noah drunk, y'all ain't gonna talk back to me, he already knew Jonah was going to sit up under the juniper tree waiting for Nineveh's destruction. He already knew David was an adulterer. He already knew that Paul was a persecutor. But he had him still. Hey, God, they kept their promise. What did you tell God? What did you tell God? Oh, God, my God. What did you tell him when God brought you out? When you find yourself in prayer, late in the midnight hour, tears running down your face. What did you tell God that you would do for him? You said, Lord, if you do it for me now, Lord, if you bring me out, Lord, if you bring them back home, Lord, if you do it for my mama, Lord, if you do it for my daddy, Lord, if you do it for my son, Lord, if you do it for my daughter, I'll do this. Or you keep it in your promise. Jesus. We are living in a time where Christians or sons and daughters of God are making promises without any expectation to keep them. Can I tell you, some of us are just offering up lip service. Some of us are just offering up vain and empty words. Your words don't have any weight to them. Your words, God cannot validate you because you have not proven yourself. The Bible said rightly, divide the word of truth. A workman need y'all to go talk back to me up in here. The Bible said, study to show thy self-approval. I wish I had a praying church up in here. What have you been doing lately for God to validate the oil that's on your life? What have you been doing lately for God to validate the anointing that is on your life? What have you been doing lately for God to validate the fact that you are an authentic son and daughter? I wish I had a praying church up in here. Yes, sir, you made the vow unto God. And can I tell you, God ain't gonna send out just anybody. He's not gonna send out no weak and no coward soldier. He ain't gonna send out a soldier that has not been equipped for battle. He's not gonna send out somebody that does not carry his spirit. He's not gonna send out somebody that don't carry his oil. Hey, God, have you been found, God? Have you been validated by God? Hey, God. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. 
Beloved of God, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. Help me, Holy Ghost. Get Yes, yes, yes. The Bible said here in Deuteronomy chapter 23. Oh God, oh God, oh God, that if you make a vow to the Lord your God, do not be slow to keep it. Hey, Jesus. The Bible said you got to be in a hurry to do the master's will. I'm on my way I'm out of here this morning. The first Sunday in October. 2023. It's been real nice. Emmanuel Outreach Ministries. 549 New Market Street. Here in Greenwood, South Carolina. You want to stop going through hell? Remember you vow. You want to stop being sick? Remember you vow. You want to be delivered? Remember you vow. You want God to bring you out? Remember you vow. You can't get slowful and you can't be slow to do the masses will. You got to get in a hurry to do his will. Yeah, Lord. You got to get in a hurry. The Bible said that when Mary and Joseph went to pay their taxes, Jesus stayed behind. They couldn't find him nowhere. Oh God, oh God. The Bible said when they went back, they found him in the temple. Y'all trying not to pay us. They found him in the temple. Mary said, why? Why did you leave me? All Jesus said, I got to be about my father's business. I got to work while it is day. For when night comes, no man shall be able to wait. You got to be in a hurry. At the right age of 13 years old, he was there confounding the mind of those priests and leaders. Can I ask you a question? What's your hold up? Do you got a hold up? Forbidding you from doing the Lord's will. Do you have a hold up? Forbidding you from keeping your vow. Move it out of the way. Move it out of your way now. Oh God, oh God. The Bible said, because if you don't do it, it's going to count as a sin against you. You made the promise. Now keep the promise. I wish I had a praying church. You made the promise. Can I tell you? God didn't make you make the promise. You made it on your own. You made the promise on your own. And then you wonder why your life has gone to hell in a hand basket. It ain't because God changed. You changed. You changed. And let me tell you, I said it on to a Wednesday night. You can't modify your vow to fit your convenience. Sometimes God gonna uproot you. Sometimes God gonna take you. God gonna take you places that everybody else can't go. It's gonna make you uncomfortable. But you made the vow that God, if you send me, I'll go. And when going time comes, to modify your vow. Keep your vow. The Bible said, but if you refrain from making a vow, it will not be counted as a sin. Oh God, but what I love about it, verse number 23 says, be careful while God whatever comes from your lips. Because once you cast it out of your mouth, it goes into the atmosphere. That's why he said, and not what go in the body that defiles it. But what comes out of the now y'all ain't gonna talk back it's not what goes in that defiles the body but what comes out and the fact that you spoke it aloud it's been written in the heaven's record book it's been written and recorded in heaven and whatever you said before God he's gonna remind you did not you make this vow hey God because you have freely vowed what you promised to the Lord I'm done this morning I'm done this morning. I just come to remind the church. What did you tell God? Did you tell God that you'll be here? 
Did you tell God that you will open up the church? Did you tell God that you will be found in prayer? Did you tell God you will be in Bible study? Did you tell God you will be in Sunday school? Did you tell God I'm going to fast once a week? Did you tell God that I'll do your will? What did you tell God? Especially in this season. So many fallen by the wayside. And who, yeah, who gonna say God? I got the, I got the hush. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I feel Jesus all over me. Hallelujah. The question is not the vow and the promises of God. The thing that is in question is your vow to God. What did you tell him? Nobody made you make that vow. Nobody asked you to make that vow. You made that vow on your own. And the fact that you made that vow, God is going to hold you accountable. He's going to hold you accountable of whatever you spoke out of your mouth. Yeah, my, 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 my. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir. That's why I said it's better not to make one. He said because you won't, it won't be counted against you. But the fact that you decided to make a vow, can I tell you, even when you joined the church, you made a vow. Can I tell you, you didn't just make a vow to the church, you made a vow to God. Uh, don't got quiet. Hallelujah. In the Baptist faith, there's something called the church covenant. Amen. That is a vow. Amen. Every church has a vow that you are going to be ruled and governed by the rules of that church. When you join the church, you submit to the leadership of the church. That's a vow. Y'all ain't going to talk back. You made the vow. Not God. You made the vow. And if you get caught slipping, it's not God's fault, it's your fault. <clears throat> Deliver me from folks for always blaming other folks for your shortcomings. They didn't do it because of whatever reason. But because they didn't do it, didn't give you the audacity not to do it either. You made a vow. When you decide, or when you, well, now I ain't going to say that. Thank you, Holy Ghost. When you commit, and I know I'm taking my time. When you commit to the yes of God, to, to God's will, your way, your will no longer is valid. Your will becomes secondary to God's will. When you say, yes, I'll be a deacon or a deaconess, when I'll become a, a Mr. 